about orbits now orbits are important a range of pathologies is related to orbit whenever you see an orbit pathology on a scan you should tell whether it is intra or extra orbital like pathology coming from outside is causing orbital symptoms pathology purely purely from the orbit and then within the orbit it is like involving the globe or it involving the cone then intraconal extra cone intra orbital extra orbital the terminology varies now this is a axial representation of uh, an orbit we can see the color thing is orbit itself and that's the conal part this looks like a cone ice cream cone now that's the globe these are the erythmoid cells and posterior ones as well and that's the orbital apex now this cone the red thing these muscles uh, this cone is bounded by um, you know extra um, intraocular muscles and this is the intra intraconal fat now that's the conal part basically out of this cone this green thing is extra conal now whenever you're looking into an orbital pathology you should tell this is within the cone the red thing or it is outside the cone like extra cone now if there is something extra conal it will still be intra orbital because this whole thing is orbit in between the orbit we have extra conal and an intra conal and then globular pathology so did you get my point that this whole is orbit it has cone the cone has an extra conal component and intra conal so if something is intra orbital it can be extra conal it can be intra conal and if something is extra orbital it will be obviously extra conal and extra orbital okay uh, this is annulus of zan that is just a thing we can't see on imaging just for this practical purposes they put on it the optic nerve is there we are very well able to see the fat here we are able to see on imaging the uh, intraocular muscles we are able to see i will uh, the globe basically we are able to see all of it um, more on ct and ultrasound rather than mr um and the bony pathologies related to obviously are important and they can be seen on um, cross section imaging now we have all the options for imaging orbits that's radiography that's obsolete now almost um until unless there's a fracture thing do we prefer ct as well uh, in the west even ultrasound is the first line modality for intraocular lens for non invasive and readily available but um the you know, ct and mr um they are complementary techniques and both are indicated in valuation of the complex lesions so basically ct and mr are the ones which you should go for straight away whenever there is an orbital pathology ct is excellent when they are um, because of the nature uh, nature natural contrast between like fat ear soft tissues whenever there is a fracture suspected go for a ct because you want to see the bony structures and all in hematoma will be visible if there are um, like pathologies of lacrimal gland or mont sister you want to see fat more in it a ct will be the first modality of choice and in cases of trauma or other stuff detect calcification intraocular foreign body you have to do a ct mr is obviously for soft tissue conscious for globe optic nerve orbital structures and checking findings and we should do targeted orbital imaging um, i've seen come across a lot of scans which are out of uh, protocol they don't target the orbits we should have fast sequences stronger gradients and fat sat suppression with gadolinium to improve the quality of the image because uh, i will show you one um, image of uh, targeted sequence what it is so basically what how on x ray orbits look like we have uh, the frontal sinuses here and these are the orbits uh, zygoma polypsychoma floor of orbit medial wall lamina propitia thing uh, floor uh, roof of the orbit floor and maxillary sinuses we can have different views intraconal views intraorbital views uh, 
different projections but ct has you know taken all of all over from all these stuff um, rather than going from complex imaging sequ- um, projections just go for a ct and your problem is solved uh, basically um, these two things seeing posteriorly are the sphenoid veins do not confuse them with any other different structure um what is view is still being done just for the fat fluid level there will be a level over here whenever there is a fracture a tear drop fracture thing intraocular foreign bodies can be seen as a dense structures but still, again you know they are obsolete ones now that's an image of ultrasound b mode ultrasound just to show you how things look like on an ultrasound usually in exams they don't ask but the examiner is really you know frustrated or old people are you know conducting your exam they can put this uh, image um that's the beam uh, here the ultrasound probe basically it's a smaller one high frequency probe this is lens that's the interior chamber from the cornea that's vit- vitreous humerus totally anechoic water like thing and here is the retina you can see the optic nerve over here muscles and that's the coning part basically so sclera can be seen over here um this very thin layer so you should be able to differentiate basically about the anterior chamber the lens vitreous and the posterior thing the optic nerve obviously you can't tell much about the pathology whenever you found any dn any structure or suppose a retinoblastoma we a big big one nodular um block like thickening you have to go for an mr or ct so basically ct and mr remain with the advantage of choice when you look at an mr what are the things you should look for and the things you need to comment upon now this is a very uh, targeted t1 coronal sequence t1 is more for anatomy of any structure um for a little bit orientation let's go to this dramatic group. um image first that that's the base of the skull and the brain tissue here we have this like mag view of the orbit these um lamina propria must be over here that's the uh, lateral orbital bone makes a leaf sinus below it and these are the ethmoid sinuses now in the orbit we can see this all fat 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 thing right that's the optic nerve and in between have this uh, the optic tract this uh, the ophthalmic vein and artery four muscles 1 2 3 4 this is superior um, lateral medial and inferior recti muscles that's a superior oblique muscle you can see its orientation is a little bit oblique and uh, this is a palpebrae superioris muscle um superior rectus inferior rectus superior inferior medial lateral thinning tells and then there are you know nerve veins vessels uh, stuff within the uh, coronal part how they are going to look like on mr these two muscles they merge together actually levator palpebrae palpebrae superioris is a bit more slit like in a bigger one uh, like this one this is more uh, the superior rectus one is more globular small bulk here in shape so these are the four muscles that's the oblique muscle um the optic nerve and a lot of fat fat is fight on t okay on uh, again these targeted images targeted views we can see the globe extra coronal fat over here extra coronal fat is the one which is outside the Uh, orbital muscle so that's basically the cone which is, i'm trying to show you on the sagittal one and the coronal one that's the lacrimal gland like Lac- lacrimal gland is always always on the um superior and lateral aspect of the globe or cone so that's the eyeball um here is the lens you can see this love vitreous humerus retina and sclera will be very very thin over here to differentiate and that's the optic nerve basically and uh, small vessels through the coronal fat that's the intraconal fat and that's the extraconal fat and the muscles are attached to here 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 so 1 2 3 4 so 
and these these are the attachment of the muscles. That's basically the uh, lens and then the anterior chamber of the eye. Um, on axial sequences, what are the things you should need to look for? Uh, T2 is more important when you're looking at pathology. We can see the con um, soft tissue contrast is far better. Um, this is lens. That's the anterior chamber in here, the attachment for it. This is vitreous humerus. Basically, it's water, so it will be appear bright, bright. And whenever there is a pathology, here it will appear blacker as compared to the one. Um, that's the optic nerve. As we know that optic nerve is a direct extension from the brain, brain comma, and it contains meninges all with it, and there is CSF present. So this white line, which is tracking all the way from here, this is CSF sleeve. Now, um, indirect sign to tell whether there is involvement of the optic nerve is there or not, this CSF sleeve will vanish. If that is gone on T2 sequence, the CSF fluid signal is gone. That means the optic nerve is already involved. Now, the two optic nerves, they meet it behind and they form an, this X-like structure, which is called the optic chiasma, and then optic tract will start. This is um, the adenocarotid arteries. You remember the coronal image which I showed you where there was optic chiasm and then uh, laterally there was uh, internal carotid arteries and pituitary in between down sphenoid sinuses. So that's basically the optic chiasm here. Okay, this is the orbital apex, that's the sphenoid bone. Any pathology of the sphenoid bone that will cause expansion of the orbital apex or extension here will cause prop process. That means the orbit will pop up later. Um, uh, how to it will protrude out of it now that's the cone these are the two uh, lateral and medial recti medial and lateral recti here and on this side these two muscles um these are better seen over here that's lacrimal gland these are the rect recti muscles the attachment globe and opting nerve uh, you can't can't see much about the um, optic nerve on T1 images, but T2 is the best one to see for pathology. One thing I would like to tell you here, in cases of um, cellulitis or any facial inflammatory thing, there will be some soft tissue thickening which is above or out of the orbit. That is called preceptal soft tissue thickening or edema or stuff like that. Post septal is the one which is behind the septum. Now, that's the area of nasolacrimal duct secretion, or uh, um, it will be somewhere over here draining. So, nasoethmoid recess or nasolacrimal duct are the areas. So, dacrolitis or stuff uh, and pathology is related to duct basically. Um, it can be tumor, not even inflammation. That will uh, involve this area and that will hamper the. Uh, flow and cause mass effect in the orbit and orbit can uh, you know patient will present with the orbital symptoms similarly paranasal sciences can cause mass effect and patient can present with orbital symptoms um, in the sphenoid one i've told you before if there's pathology of the sphenoid bone things will pulse and cause mass effect in the orbit and the patient may present with uh, um, orbital symptoms i think i will stop here and touch the ear next time uh, I wanted to tell you things in more detail, uh, but these are the stuff which are clinically relevant. I will touch ear more detail and in a separate lecture. I'm happy that time has ended because uh, ear is such a vast topic um, and its contents are very, very much that you should know while reporting and which are clinically relevant. Next time I will uh, share with you a template of paranasal sinuses first protocol as well. Orbit actually doesn't have a title because the pathology is very, very dynamic. So I can't share uh, just checklist with you. So paranasal sinuses, I will be sharing a sample report. And then we will move on to the inner ear and external ear, middle ear outlook on, uh, you know, high resolution CT and a few things on MR and especially facial nerve, how to trace it. Thank you.